Well, let's see if it succeeded. Okay, before I start reviewing this, can we just can we just have a moment to appreciate the material? To appreciate to appreciate just just a moment. Thank you. <laughs> How to succeed a business without really trying is a very interesting musical. It's one that I've been aware of for a little while. I've never actually seen the full thing, but I listened to the score and I listened to bits and pieces of it and I really enjoyed a lot of it. So when they announced it be coming to London and with such a boldly diverse cast, including trans casting, yes! I was extremely excited. Now I've seen it, I'm a little bit mixed. So what did I like about How to Succeed? What didn't quite impress me? Let's find out. But if you haven't seen my face before, hi, I'm Ellie. I talk about theatre. I do reviews, I do discussions, I do video essays. And if any of that sounds interesting to you, please consider hitting like and subscribe. It really helps me and helps out the channel. Also below, channel memberships, you can join. Would you like more videos? Big Slay, go join. Yes, I'm bad at advertising things. <laughs> I'm bad at doing self-promotion, okay? Does that work? Did, are, you, are you inclined to do so now? I swear, this is the video that loads of people join from. I'm going to laugh. <laughs> but let's talk about how to succeed. How to succeed at business surrounds J. Pierpoint Finch, a window washer who finds a book which leads them on a journey from promotion to promotion in the big world of business. This show was designed as a satire, a satirical look at the big world of business and capitalism, criticizing a lot of the elements of business that were around in the 60s and some that still linger to this day. This production aimed to get back to that idea, to really highlight the satire within this show. For the most part, this production does a good job at that. It is questionable why you would be satiring a time gone by now, especially when some of these ideas do feel a bit outdated, and maybe something new could be made to satirize the world of business now. But if we look at it directly as a criticism of a time gone by, it does work. But I think it's very much helped by a very witty book with some great punchlines. This show is very funny. And I think that this is heightened by some really great performances throughout. But this book's fatal flaw is definitely its pace. Act one is almost at an hour and a half long. And there is no need for me to explain to you why that is very long for a musical comedy. It actually works quite well for the majority of Act 1, because the start of Act 1 has a lot of great songs. But as soon as it starts to focus more on the plot elements and the character building, instead of just being Finch jumping from one job to another within this business, the pace kind of slows down a little bit and it ends up dragging the first act completely. What's more, the second act is really weirdly structured. And because of this, it actually makes the second act drag a lot harder than the first act did. Because the entire thing focuses on one job, on one part of Finch's climb to the top. So on the whole, this book has a lot of pros and cons, which ends up making me feel very mixed on the story as a whole. This musical has music and lyrics written by the creators of Guys and Dolls. And I think you can tell this from the most part because there are some really strong songs in here. But the problem with it comes from the fact that it's structured very weirdly. By this, I mean that the best songs in the show all come at the start of Act 1. We go from bop to bop to bop of the strongest material. We go from How to Succeed, a really fun and boppy opening number, to Happy to Keep His Dinner Warm, a lovely ballad with some really funny lines. Performed in this production phenomenally by Ali Daniel. We then go on to another really upbeat and fun number in Company Way. And we also get some weirdness and just completely over the top comedy in Coffee Break. And then as soon as you hit that point, the score of this show just kind of goes like that. You get some songs that aren't really that memorable or the satire of it 
really doesn't translate very well to a modern day, such as Secretary is not a toy. And again, this doesn't help the first act, as this is the exact point where it starts to drag. And you have to wait until the very end of Act 2 to get another song that feels as strong as the start of Act 1 in the over-the-top, show-stopping number, Brotherhood of Man. The good songs in this show slap. They are so good, they're so strong, they're amazing to listen to. But there's such a lull point in this show and the problem comes from the fact that all of the weakest material comes one after another. Being in a much smaller space, this version of the show has stripped back a lot of the elements of this production. Normally, when you see a production of How to Succeed, you get loads of businessmen, you get big ensembles, it's very much that style of 60s musical. But because we're in the Southwark Playhouse, a relatively small London house, we get quite a small cast on a very squash stage. Now, if you've never been to the Circuit Playhouse, I'm going to use the program of this show to kind of show what it's like. I don't know why I'm doing this, I could edit this in, but you know what, I'm lazy, so... Anyway, the Circuit Playhouse is a black box space, and you can have different variations of staging. The production that this company did last year had it traversed, so you have audience here, an audience here, and the staging of the show was in the middle. How to Succeed is performed with audiences on three sides. You've got the stage here, audience here, audience here, audience here. Which means that the space that the actors get to perform in is very, very small. And with the constant changing of sets and the different tables and desks brought in, there really isn't much space to play with with this show. I've seen this stage structured in better ways that probably would have suited this production more. I think that this would have suited being straight on. Having the audience just here so you have a little bit more space on the sidelines to have this staging, to have this set and to allow yourself more space to grow and have these bigger dance numbers that a lot of this score is calling out for. We can also talk about the set design. The set design of the show serves its purpose. It's fine, it's bright and colourful. Imagine a colour scheme very similar to what I'm wearing right now. And it has some fun little elements like a wired phone that can be dragged all the way to the front of the stage, file cabinets that pull all the way out, and a massive neon ladder, which is climbed during the show, which I appreciated, yeah. But that's about it. And again, I feel like the squashed staging of the show put a lot of limits on what this set design could do. Now, let's talk about this cast. This production did gender-blind casting. There was a lot of talking about this production that it might be doing uh, gender swapping, but no, this is gender-blind, and so for the most part, it is women playing men. Gabrielle Friedman plays Finch, who is the closest to the straight man in this production. That's very much the role that they put onto the character. So everyone else can be completely over the top and they have something to play against. I think she had the charm that you need for a character like Finch and the confidence that he clearly has. Then there's Ali Daniel, who plays the love interest Rosemary in the show. And oh my God. Wow. When I say, give us the opportunity and we will give you trans excellence, I'm just going to show you a picture of Ali Daniel because what an absolute star. She sells this role completely. I think a great example of this is her first number, Happy to Keep His Dinner Warm, where she gets such a perfect balance between the comedy of the song and the outlandish and silly lines of it and the punch lines within the song but also manages to make it feel so sweet and relatable and it's sung so lovely and amazing and oh, oh my god what an absolute icon legend the moment give her an award give her a spotlight i want more ali daniel give me more ali daniel such a phenomenal betrayal and the key highlight of this entire show. Tracy Bennett plays the big boss, J.B. Bigley, and her betrayal is a lot of fun. I think she nails all of her punchlines, and I think she was really believable in this kind of big boss role. Being one of the most seasoned actors in this cast, you can very much tell that, and the dynamic of that worked very well when contrasted to this 
otherwise quite young cast. Elliot Gooch plays Bud Frump and Camp. Camp. High Camp. Gooch is just so silly and over the top playing the nephew of Bigley and being a very clear satire and criticism of nepotism. And his performance leans completely into the over the top silliness of this script. And despite not having a massive role in the show, I thought another key highlight was Verity Power as Smitty. One of the secretaries who comes in every now and then, she had some of the funniest one-liners and her physicality just completely sold it for me. I think on the whole, the rest of this cast did a really strong job. I don't think there was a single cast member who didn't really get a moment to shine. Even the narration from RuPaul's Drag Race star Michelle Visage is fun and campy and a, a nice little touch. And I must give a special shout out to Grace Kanyamibwa, who plays Miss Jones through the show, but really gets this beautiful moment in Brotherhood of Man to show off her vocals completely. The casting of the approach of this show is a little bit weird because it tries to subvert expectations in places and then doesn't in others. It's a confusing approach because it doesn't go all into it. But I find that for my own enjoyment of the show, it's a little bit more of a nitpicky criticism. How to Succeed doesn't quite succeed, but it's a fun watch. There's enough here to enjoy that I would probably recommend going to see it if you, you know, take a listen to some of the cast albums and enjoy some of the music. There's some great performances here, and there's some good songs. Does the story drag a little bit in places? Yeah, is it a little bit outdated? Sure. But I think the key moments of the production really do shine. And there's trans excellence, because we need more trans excellence. Give me more trans excellence. Thank you. But what do you think? Are you a fan of How to Succeed? Have you seen the specific production? Have you seen any other production of How to Succeed? Let me know all of your thoughts in the comments down below. If you did enjoy this video, please consider hitting like and subscribe. It really helps me and helps out the channel. There's some links to my other videos on screen right now and a link to my Instagram if you want to drop me a follow over there. But that's it for me today and I'll hopefully see you next time. Bye!